So um, let's say uh, on Tuesday I did upload my app. I got all of those six greens. I clicked submit and then Amazon was on track and then they emailed me saying congratulations your app is available. So let's say I had that um, fully, uh, fully published. Now because I waited too long it logged me out so I'm going to need to log back in. But to show you here that um, what it would look like when this is fully published, let me log into an account uh, where I can show you what that um, what that looks like. So in this particular account, I've got a few different apps here, and once the app is live, it looks like this, right? You've got different um, status messages right there. I've got an app that I'm just testing, not submitted. On that, obviously, I would just go back uh, on the app, and I just need to make sure all of these are set up green. And for the assessment, I just need them all to be green. You could click Submit if you want, if you feel you want your app to go out there. It will go out there for the whole world to start to see. Now, it is a class project. You may or may not care about that. You may have made up this account completely fake. That's fine for the class project. If you wanted this to be a real app, for people to start to download, you want to make sure that all of this is filled in as legitimately as possible. Uh, but you will have the option, like one of these that does exist, uh, this has also the option of remove from the App Store. So this, as your sort of uh, proof of concept, work in progress, student work, you could fully publish it, you know, get me to give you the, the grade on that, and then you could come back and do remove. You could then go through that process of removing your app. That's fine. Or you could, like I said, simply get all of the greens. I would go through the screens and see all of that. You don't have to show it to me on the final device, because the way I would fully test that is I could go to, on my device, in theory, on my device, I go to the App Store and find your app and install it. And that would be the ultimate way for me to check it fully works. Uh, we don't need to go that far. I just need to see that on your Amazon developer account you've got all the greens and you've either submitted or uh, you are uh, about to submit. Now in this case like on mine I haven't uh, submitted it yet. Um, we just worked on our on our binary. We just worked on our, on our uh, solution. So I've got a new version of my app. Uh, before you submit it, or uh, I don't think you can do this after you've submitted and you're waiting, you have the ability to go back in and uh, edit and remove the, the binary the APK file from Tuesday and put today's if you want. You can replace the one from Tuesday with, with today's. Um, after you've fully published, like so an example over here of one of these that is published, if I wanted to release a new version, this one's been this one's live. Anyone can find it and download it. Um, you see, I've got up here add upcoming version. So that would create a version two. That would create a, a new version where you upload the the new APK file with the new features, and it would ask you, well, what's new in your app? And you write a couple bullet points about what's new. So this. Let's say the one I uploaded on Tuesday was was approved. It's available for everyone. Well, I want to add today's version. So I would go in here, add upcoming version, and upload this version of the APK. If, you, if it did fully get published uh, from since Tuesday, you'd have to remember to go back to config XML. And then remember you've got uh, Android version code, you'd have to upgrade that to 2. If you've uploaded your version on Tuesday, if it was public, and you want to release version 2, you have to go in here and set this to version 2. And the next time you make another change, you're going to go back to uh, at the App Store, you're going to click Add a New Version, you're going to add here version code 3. And every time you upload a new APK, you just have to increment this one number whole numbers 
sequentially and eventually I'm going to release version 7 of it and such. So you have to change your version code number in the config XML file and then you you do your release key store all of the stuff we did on Tuesday that'll be uh, that'll be your final step if you uh, want to make sure this all works can I do what we did to get can I do by myself what we did together on Tuesday the video for that is online um, you should practice it to get the full experience but what I wanted to wrap up with is, is this, that when you release versions past version 1, you have to remember to go to your file here and uh, set this to increments higher than 1. And then you'll have the option Add Upcoming Version, a new version of your app. That'll also have a few check marks. That'll have a, that'll have a seventh check mark, a check mark about um, what what's new in your app. So you just give a couple of bullet points about new social sharing feature, new contact the developer, bug fixes, whatever. So you'll get your seventh check mark, you click submit, some time will pass, I don't know how much, it's up to Amazon, and then your app version 2 will be out there. And people will then get the option automatically, download the latest version of this app, and then they'll get the latest version. So we can't quite do that in, in person right now because not everyone's on that same level there, but that's how it is in general. This is going to be recorded. That's the idea. Questions? Yes? Uh, is the the only The only one that's required is the version code of Android, but it would make sense to also change common because here, this is the one that you can decide what numbers these are. The one of Android, you have to increment, but this one you could do version 1.2 and then the date, or version 1.1. the date, or you could do version 2.0.0. .0. However you want to do that scheme there, that one really doesn't matter. The only one that matters is the one in the specific platforms. Does your display name, can that be the same? Does it have to be the same? This display name is uh, actually uh, going to be the, uh, the name of the icon on the device. So here on my device, it's got Smith CBDB. If you only call it CBDB, that's what's going to show up as the icon, which could be different than what you're calling it over on Amazon. Right on Amazon, um, you know, whatever I have it named over here in my in my uh, general info tab, this one's going to be IMD. So whatever whatever it is here, that's what's going to show up in your listing on Amazon, but when they install it, it's going to be based on what you called it in the config XML file. Does that have to be the same for the next versions? No, you could change that if you want. You could use uh, different different ways to identify it if you want, sure. Because since we are making a new version number, is all one safe to in the source in our um, Visual Studio. You mean we keep the old version source to, or it just permanently changes? So you're saying if we if we change version version two, we cannot access version one. So we change code, right? Unless we save file, of course. Yes, if you've got copies like I do, so every time I come into the class, I make a copy. So I've got my older versions of the source every from every day. So that's how I can go back to older versions. Yes. So when you make these changes here, these, these stay there, version two, and you cannot go back to version one this way. You have to open up the older version from your folders over here. Okay, um, any other questions? Okay, so um, 
We'll end the lecture at that point. And what we